Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to look now at the next macro in the color selection free macro set. The links are down below and to install that you'd need to go to view, studio and library to bring up this panel and then the hamburger there. Click on that and import macros to get up the Dave color selection. If I'm going to take the RGB selection I'm going to show you a bit of a problem here. And the problem is, if say I wanted to select the blues here, I can go to the pipette there, drag it over to the blues and select a nice blue from in there to select. And then if I bring up the select color, I need to put in the values of this. So I can see that by clicking on the pipette there, which brings it across to here and I can see it's 0, 175 and 250. So 0, 175 and 250. And if I turn off the bottom layer here, you can see what's being selected. And it's selected in that area there. And I can turn the tolerance up here so it selects more. But it's still selecting only down the bottom there. It's a very limited amount of selection. And the top layer here is not being selected at all. And the reason for this, if I turn this back on again and drag the pipette over this layer up here, you can see the RGB values there. Red is 1, green is 55 and blue is 99 which is a long way away from these values down here. So in other words, this is not going to select it. So what I need to be able to do is, let's just delete that, I need to be able to select by hue. The lightness and darkness doesn't matter. So this is where the HSL color selection comes in. So if I click that one here, then I open this up here. I did a video about this a little while ago, but I'm going to go through it again here. And here is the macro for that video, by the way. So what I can do is turn off the soften edges, the removals and the refine. And then what we see here is I've already got the red is selected here and everything else is black and white. So how I did this is with an HSL layer. If you click on one of these here, you just use the red, the first one. And you can see all of this area around here is selected. So everything but the red is selected. And then the saturation is turned down on that. So I can grab the other side here, bring this around here, and you can see where it is now selecting up here. And I can push this out a bit to get the selection that I want on that. And maybe I can sort of pull a bit in. To, so is it going to work a bit on feathering? I don't know. We'll see now. So that is how I can select that area, but I've still got the black and white. So to get rid of that, I need a calculation, which I do in the next one here. Turn that on and turn off the bottom one. And you can see I've got rid of a lot of that black and white here because what this does here, it looks for monochrome and monochrome is when red, green, blue are all the same value. So I've already done that. And to make it a bit softer, I can remove near monochrome so I can start turning things down here. But I can only go as far as this starting to disappear. And I can play with the calculations here to see if any of the other ways of calculating it works. There's five different algorithms for that, but zero is often a good one. So I've done that. Then the next one is the removals. So I go to this one here, click on it to turn it on. And this is simply a mask. So if I go up here to a paintbrush, and make sure it's on black and then paint over these. It's removing it because I'm factually painting on the mask here. And then I can just select those areas to paint. And with this, I'm using a brush, which is 100% opacity and about halfway through hardness. And you're going to paint. This takes a fair amount of processor time so you might need to do it very slowly it depending upon how fast your process is i got a fairly quick one here so it takes a bit of time and let's take off that bit as well and that'll do and that shows what we've got here now then if i turn on the bottom layer i can see that it looks the same here because i haven't done anything with this so i just got it as an overlay above here so now I can do something like I can put in a, let's say, put in a recolor. I don't want to recolor the whole area, so I just drag it down to sort of a vertical bar there into this lot. And now I've just got those areas 
change so I can change the hue here. Let's go to sort of a yellowy green to match the plants. Then I can turn down the saturation, that's a bit on the exciting side, and adjust the lightness to whatever I want it to be. And then if there are areas around here I think I've gone a bit too far, I can still go back to the removables layer and paint more black on that. So the question is, what is this soften edge for? And if I turn the bottom layer off and zoom in a bit, you can see that around here, the edges of this are quite hard because literally they're selected or not selected. So I would like to be able to soften that. And that's what this is for. So I go to the soften edges here, turn that on, and this is a blur. And then if I turn up the radius of this, that's going to soften it, but it softens the inside as well, so all the texture is, is lost. So I could use a different approach to this. So what I'm going to do here is turn this into a selection. To, so to do that, I go to the top layer here, and I go to Select and Selection from Layer. And there we go, the selection appears. Control 0 to go back out again for now. And I can just use that selection now to do another adjustment. So I can just close that up, turn that off, turn on the bottom one so I can see where I am, and then go to Adjustments and Recolor. And now it only covers that area hit there. Control D to get rid of the marching ants. And you go into that, you can see you've got a softer area here. I can turn off the bottom one a bit. No, I can't do that because it's just an adjustment. So now I can change the hue again to whatever I want. Do the saturation and lightness adjustment, control zero to go back up again. And there's that. That's my color selection done with a softened edge. And that's it. So thank you very much for watching.